Hey y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm trying something new here. Aha. Uh -huh. You see the closed captioning? Yes, indeed. I'm trying with all my heart. And so listen, uh, we are going to um, use some new technology again. And uh, y'all pray for me and pray with me. Uh, it's no easy task trying to do stuff for the first time. It gets a little bit uh, testy. So y'all bear with me. Amen. This is for our listeners who need to be able to read what uh, is being said. And so to God be the glory. Um, I have something up here and I think it's going to work. So y'all bear with me in the name of Jesus. <laughs> How are you this morning? Welcome to the Sunday sermon. I'm Valerie Oliver, founding pastor of First Liberty Baptist Church of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But we are not your traditional Baptist church and I am not your traditional pastor. We are all inclusive, amen? We are all inclusive, and listen, all are welcome. That's what that means. LGBTQ plus community, you are welcome. I don't care what your background is, your gender expressions, who you marry, who you love, where you're from, none of that matters because none of it matters to God. God is all inclusive. God is not an exclusive God. God ex excludes no one. And so you are all welcome here in this place. First Liberty is the place where love fulfills the law. And so beloved, I want you to feel comfortable this morning. I want you to know that you are welcome here. Without further ado, we're going to worship, but before we worship, I want to wish uh, those of you who are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary in the month of September, happy birthday to you and happy anniversary to those celebrating an anniversary. So God bless you. We wish you many, 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 many more from First Liberty Church to you and your family. So happy birthday to those celebrating in, in September and a happy anniversary. God bless you and keep on counting. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to try to transition now from uh, this introduction to our worship song with the new technology I'm using. So y'all bear with me now, all right? So we're going to try to worship. If you see three or four or five different <laughs> pictures before we get to it, uh, y'all bear with me. All right, so we're going to move on now with the worship song. Amen.
Amen, amen. Nobody but Jesus. Amen. I love calling his name. That was Shirley Caesar. I love calling your name. Oh, yes, there's something about the name Jesus. There is something about the name Jesus. Jesus. Amen. I think I got it from here with the technology. Uh, I'm uh, able to see uh, who's on, I think, a little bit on my phone. I see you, Sister T. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. God bless you. Listen, uh, you are welcome here. Uh, whenever you see fit, whenever you feel like joining us, come on and uh, and worship with us. So thank God for you, and I'm glad you joined us this morning. Uh, Y'all, we're going to go on into prayer. Uh, we ought to always pray. The Lord said, uh, don't carry your burdens. Don't try to do it all by yourself. Cast your burdens onto me, for I care it for you. And so, beloved, don't worry about your burdens. Just give them to the Lord. Amen? Give your burdens to the Lord. All right? So let us approach God's throne of grace and make our request made known unto the Lord. Amen. Pray with me. Dear God in heaven, we thank you so much. Thank you for this brand new day. Thank you for those who are listening live now, those that I cannot see, those who will listen later. Bless their hearts. Bless every family represented here. And Lord, I pray that you will grant them their every need. Now, Lord, we want to pause for a moment to say thank you. Thank you for being so good to us in spite of all that is going on in the world. We still can find reason to say thank you. We still can find reason to look up to you and hold up our hands and worship you and say, Lord, we thank you. You've been good to us. Some of us are suffering, but some of us have been able to make it through. And so, Lord, we ask that those who are suffering, that you would give them strength. Those who are struggling right now, today, whatever it might be, Lord, help. 
I used to hear the elders in the church say, Lord, help. If we can't say no more, all we can say is help. Lord, you know exactly what we need. And Lord, we say help this morning. There are those who need help all over the world. Lord, help. We stretch forth our hands to you. Lord, where else can we go? We look to you, Lord, for our help. And we want to thank you, Lord, for those of us who have, have been blessed even through the storms and the storms of life, the natural disasters as well as the disasters of life. You've brought us through, Lord. Come hell or high water, you've brought us through. Even those of us who have had to leave this world through the storms and through the trials and tribulations of life, you have still blessed them. They are still blessed, Lord, because you have healed and delivered them from this world. This world is nothing but a barren land. It is not our home. This world is fallen. This world is a place where evil reigns, Lord, but you made an escape. You made a way. And, and when those of us uh, lose loved ones who we, we love and cherish, Lord, we, we haven't lost anything. They have gained the glory, Lord, that you promised, and you have taken them out of this mess. All their troubles are over. And, Lord, we want to say thank you this morning. And, and those of us who are here, oh, God, we need you. Bless broken hearts this morning, Lord. Men broken hearts. Uh, build up those who are weak. Strengthen them, Lord. Give them the will to live. Give them the desire to go on and move forward in you, Lord. And all, all we need to do is trust you, Lord. I know things don't look right sometimes. Lord, we, we see that you have a funny way of doing things sometimes. Sometimes we just don't understand. It, Lord, sometimes the things that you, you allow in our lives and the things that we have to go through just doesn't make any sense. But we trust you this morning, Lord, and we know that you know exactly what you're doing. And you know, we know, we, we know you love us, Lord, and we know that your eye is on the sparrow. Not even a sparrow can fall to the ground apart from your knowledge. And if your eye is on the sparrow, hallelujah, then I know you're watching over me. And you're watching over all of us, Lord. And we give you thanks this morning. Thank you for food on our tables. Even those uh, who are without electricity and those who are, are still stranded with no place to go, Lord. You have sent people with hot plates of food. Woo! You have sent people with money, Lord. You have sent people to assist them and to help them, Lord. Uh, they are not alone. And we thank you, Lord, for making your presence made known unto them. Oh, God, we thank you for being there and for making a way out of no way. Hallelujah. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your compassion. And oh Lord, we thank you most of all for Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the one who, who gave his life to make it all possible, the one who gave his life so that we might have life. We thank you. Oh, Lord, if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? Where would we be? And so, Lord, we thank you this morning, even for the small things, even for the things we so easily take for granted, the shoes we wear, the clothes we wear, a roof over our heads. 
Some people don't have a roof this morning. Hurricane Ida came through here, Lord, and some people don't have a roof. Some people can't flip a switch and the lights come on. Some people can't push a button and, and, and cool air will blow out and cool the home. Oh, God, we thank you for those small things that we take for granted. Running water. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Now, whether it's a sickness in the body, Lord, those who are here listening, whenever they listen, if there is a physical ailment, Lord, you are still in the healing business. You are still the doctor in the sick room. And if anybody is in trouble, you are still the lawyer in the courtroom. Oh, Lord, you are whoever we need you to be this morning. And we thank you, Lord. And it could be a financial issue. It could be a marriage problem. It could be a heart broken, Lord. We know that you can mend broken hearts. And those who are bereaved this morning, Lord, those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, oh God, give them peace. Peace that passes all human understanding. Oh Lord, keep on keeping us. We need you this morning, Lord. We need you all over the world, and even those who don't think they need you. We know that you bless them now because you know they need you. I pray that someday they will realize that blessed are the poor in spirit, those who realize that they are poor in spirit without you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name, Lord. We thank you. We thank you this morning. And now, Lord, as we approach your word, I pray, Lord, that we will approach it with open hearts and with spiritual ears so that we will hear what it is you have to say to us. And, Lord, I must decrease and you increase. Use me, Lord, as an instrument in thy hands, Lord. You are the only master. There are many in this earth who call themselves masters, who think they are masters, but you are the one and only master, Lord. And I am in your hands. Use me as you see. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, beloved. Know that God is not only a prayer hearing God, but God is also a prayer answering God. Amen. And so, beloved, listen here. I want you to know that you're going to be all right. You are going to make it. Amen. You are going to make it no matter what. And so, let us go on now into the Word. I have a question that I want to ask you this morning. And it comes because it's been on my heart. And I believe the Lord put it there. And the question is, do you ever wonder how God feels about you? Do you ever wonder how God sees you because of something in your background or because of something you've done or because of where you're from or who you're attracted to or because maybe you're transgender or because you're in the LGBTQ plus community or because you're black 
or because you're Hispanic, or, or, or do you ever wonder how God feels about you and, and how God really sees you? Especially when other people have disqualified you. And other people have thrown their own personal opinions at you. Well, beloved, I want you to come on over with me to Galatians. The Lord has a word for you this morning. If you've asked yourself that question, I want you to come on over with me to Galatians. And see what thus saith the Lord. Galatians, the third chapter, beginning with verse 26. Galatians chapter 3, beginning with verse 26, beloved. And we're going to look at those four verses, 26 through 29. Paul was teaching the Christians in Galatia. Galatia, a region in Asia. Paul was teaching them about faith over fear and faith over the law because the law brings fear. You see, you had to keep every bit of the law, beloved. And so, and so I'll get to that in a minute, but Paul was teaching them about faith over the law. You see, there were false teachers going around confusing people. They were confusing the Galatians and, and teaching them false doctrine and, and had them believing that in order to be saved, in order to come to God through Christ, you had to do certain things and you had to do it their way. And Paul had to come and set the record straight. Paul told them, listen here, Galatians, listen here, you people of God. Uh, uh, you are no longer under the law. You are not under the law anymore. We have been freed from the law by our faith in Jesus the Messiah. We have been set free from the law, for it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And so, beloved, thank God that we have been set free from the law. Beloved, there is no way under this sun, no way in this God's green earth that we could have kept all of the law. You see, uh, uh, you can't, if you miss one, you have broken the whole law. 99 and a half won't do. Beloved, you can keep all the laws except for or a half or one, point one, or point five. Beloved, and guess what? You missed the whole law. You cannot miss any of it. So if you miss one law, you have broken the whole law. Take the Ten Commandments, for instance. You can keep 99 and a half and, and, and still miss that other half and break the whole law. You have broken the whole law, beloved. And so there is no way in this world that we could have kept the law. The only reason God presented us with the law in the Old Testament, the only reason God presented the law to the Jews uh, because is because he wanted to point them to the Messiah. The Lord wanted to point the Jews to the Messiah to let them know that they need Jesus. The Lord I serve, our creator, spirit, divine, he, she. You can't pro, uh, uh, assign a pronoun to God, you know. God is too big for a pronoun. And so, beloved, you, you, you listen here. God said, listen, you cannot break a bit of it. So I'm sending you somebody who can fulfill the law for you. I'm sending Jesus. I'm sending my one and only son. Aha, uh -huh, it's me in the flesh. Uh -huh, that's another sermon. And so, beloved, 99 and a half won't do. Now, hold on. I'm going somewhere now. Just stick with me. If you are still trying to live under the law today, beloved, you're in trouble. You're in trouble because we have now been justified 
uh, in all of our wrongdoings, in all of our sin behavior uh, and sinful behavior by our faith in Jesus, the Messiah. We can't follow the law. Thank God for Jesus. And so that brings us to our text. Now you just stick with me. You hold on. God has a word for you. Thank God for Jesus. And so Paul is telling the Galatians, look, you can't live by the law. We're not under the law anymore. And so he says to them, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith, not by the law. Well, what is faith? Somebody might ask. What is faith? Faith is believing what God has said to us, beloved. Faith is believing the promises that God has made to us. Faith is believing that God is going to do what God said God is going to do. God keeps her promises. Spirit keeps her promises. God Almighty keeps his promises. God does what God says God is going to do, beloved. And, and, and faith is believing the word of God however the Lord speaks to you, beloved. You know, the Lord speaks to us in many, many ways. Hello, Roseanne, I see you. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. God speaks to us in many ways, beloved. God speaks to us in our spirit. God speaks to us through the scriptures. God speaks to us in our circumstances, through music, through people. God speaks to us. And faith is believing and standing on the word no matter how God brings the word to you. And when you receive Jesus the Messiah, you believe the word, didn't you? That's how you receive Jesus. That's how many of us were saved. We, we believe the word. We believe Romans 10 verses 9 through 10. We believe Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 where it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And we believed it and we embraced it. We believed it in our hearts, beloved. And we confessed it. You know, when you believe something in your heart, you're going to talk about it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so whatever you believe in your heart, you're going to say it. You're going to confess it. You're going to talk about it. And so we believed Romans 10 and 9 and 10. And so, beloved, it became real within our hearts. It became real to us. And we confessed it. And now we're saved, beloved. We are delivered from this world. Hallelujah. And we have now been delivered from this world and into God's hands for an eternity. Now, just wait a minute. I'm just giving you a little backdrop. Just hold on. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and, and anyone, beloved, can do the same thing today the same way. Believe God's word, however God speaks to you. Believe the word. Believe the word. And that's faith. That's faith in God, beloved. And Paul is saying to these Galatians, don't try to follow the Lord. You won't make it. But if you have faith in God, you'll make it. You'll have eternal life. And so Paul says in, uh, to them, so in Christ Jesus, you are all Keep that in mind. I'm coming back to that. Because in Christ Jesus, you are all children through faith. Children of God through faith. And then, brothers and sisters and beloved, uh, Paul goes on to verse 27. He says, for all of you, there's that word all again. All of you who are baptized into Christ have been clothed and clothed yourselves with Christ. 
All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Now this is baptism by the Spirit, not by water. Come on now, follow me now. This is being baptized by the Spirit of God. I'm not talking about uh, something that happens in an event after you have uh, 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 received Christ. I'm talking about the moment you receive Christ, you are baptized in the Spirit. You are baptized by the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God uh, comes and, and communes with your spirit never to leave you nor forsake you. The Lord said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you because the Lord now resides in those of us who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now, hold on, God excludes no one, beloved. Uh, so this is the baptism by the Spirit of God, not by water. Although we should follow Jesus' example and be baptized by water. Uh -huh. Because you do remember when Jesus was baptized by his cousin John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Yes. Uh -huh. And so we ought to get baptized uh, to follow Jesus' example, beloved. It is an outward symbol uh, saying to the public what you've already done in your heart. You're telling people I have died to myself and to my own ways and, and I'm being buried myself. I'm burying myself and I'm being raised to new life. And you go down in the liquid grave, we call it, in the water, and then you come up raised to new life. It's nothing more than a symbol of something you've already believed in your heart. The salvation is already done before you get in the water. I just thought I'd throw that out there. And so, beloved, uh, 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 Paul is saying to them, uh, listen here, you, 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 when you were baptized into Christ by the Spirit, uh -huh, you clothed yourself. Now, what does it mean, you clothed yourself? When you believed in your heart that Christ died for your sins, Jesus comes into your spirit right then and there, and you are clothed with Christ's spirit. You have put on Christ like you put on a garment. You have put on Christ like you put on a coat or a jacket or a robe. You are now clothed with the spirit of God. Amen, Rise and Cheryl. Amen. You have put on Christ. Like you put on a garment. And brothers and sisters, beloved, verse 28. Woo, this is what I wanted to get to. Paul goes on to say to the Galatians, he says in verse 28, there is neither Jew. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. See, the Jews thought they were better than everybody else. The Jews thought they were better than the Gentiles. See, everybody who wasn't a Jew was considered a Gentile. We would be considered Gentiles back in that day. Uh -huh. And to some, we still are considered Gentiles, you see. Uh, see, everybody who wasn't a Jew, you wasn't a godly person. You you didn't belong to God, you see, if you were, were not a Jew. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But Paul here uh -huh, is telling the Galatians, look, don't follow that law. That's the law. No, we're not under the law anymore. Or, or you are now under grace by faith. And so in verse uh, 28, Paul goes on to say to them, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. Woo! What you say? There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Well, you brothers and sisters, you beloved, are all one in Christ Jesus. There are some who believe they have privilege over others, you see. 
Uh -huh. There are some who feels like God loves them more than they love that than God loves anybody else. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, there are, uh, are those who feel like uh, uh, their blood uh, is richer than anybody else's blood. That their life is more valuable than anybody else's life. Uh huh. But in Christ. According to what Paul is saying here, in the word of God, there is no white privilege. There is no class privilege. There is no religious privilege. There is no sex privilege such as male over female. There are no privileges. Hallelujah. See, back in the biblical days, beloved, when, when people were trying to live under the law, men had privilege over women. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, the women were treated uh, as less than second-class citizens. Yeah, less than second-class citizens. Uh, uh, men would do all of the inheritances. Uh, uh, they could work outside of the home, and, and they could be educated, and the women were not allowed to make these accomplishments. Right now, over there in Afghanistan, since the Taliban has taken over again, they have interrupted the women's educational processes. They were being able to go to school and educate themselves. Some of them 20 years old now. And 25 years old now have been interrupted in their education and, and in the progress and successes they were making in life. Because these Taliban, these men, uh, think that women ought to be in one place and stay in one place. Oh, but Paul is saying, oh, no, you got it twisted. Uh-uh. You see, and so uh, the men could do everything, beloved. Uh, it was a patriarchal system. And women were not allowed to be leaders in the church. You see, beloved, and this was all under the law. You see, under the law, the Torah, the Pentateuch. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, that's why many men today want to hold on to the law. It gives them privilege. I know I said something just now. I know I told the truth just now, beloved. That's why a lot of men today like to hold on to this old law and this old patriarchal system because they want to try and say this is the way of God. Uh, this is God's will. No, no. We are not under the law anymore. Paul is saying to you today, beloved, and the Lord is saying to you today, no, uh, this is not God's will. Taliban, you're dead wrong. Uh, men who want to live under that patriarchal society and system, you're dead wrong. You're wrong. Uh -huh. uh, the law uh, was insufficient. This was under the law. The law was insufficient. If the law had been sufficient, beloved, we wouldn't have needed a new law, a new covenant. We are under a better covenant now. See, the old covenant, they had to do away with the old covenant because nobody could keep the law. Nobody could keep it. A covenant is an agreement uh, 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 between two people, and in this case, between God and the Jews. And they couldn't keep the covenant. They couldn't keep the agreement. They couldn't keep the contract. And so beloved, they breached the contract. And so Jesus sent, uh, was sent by God with a new covenant. A covenant of love. Now there is only one law. Love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's all about love now. It's all about God's grace now. It's all about God's spirit now. It's all about faith now. It's not about the law. None of us would make it under the law. 
So, beloved, we need to embrace grace. We need to embrace grace. We are now under the Spirit of God through our faith, not the law. If we try to live by the law, beloved, none of us would make it into eternal life with God. None of us. That's why I'm so glad God sent Jesus. There are no privileges under grace. There are no privileges in Christ Jesus. There is neither Jew nor Gentile in Jesus. There is neither slave nor free in Jesus. There is neither male nor female in Jesus. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Now that's what the Lord wanted to tell you this morning. Good morning, Lisa. I see you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. And then Paul goes on, and I'm on my way to a close. Paul said, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Woo! If you belong to Christ, then I'm, I'm just going to let you think about that for a little while. I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to go into that. Paul said, if you belong to Christ, then, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You see, we see everybody who was biologically Abraham's seed uh, uh, were, were Jews. Uh, and they, they believed that they belonged to God. And, and, and that was true. But when God brought the new covenant uh, and sent Jesus or with the new covenant, uh, then, then now uh, uh, it's no longer Abraham's biological seed now. What does it mean that you are Abraham's seed? You see, see, we are Abraham's seed now. Uh, uh, what does that mean? It means we are all, in Christ, spiritual Jews. We are all spiritual Israelites. We are all God's people, just like the Jews were back in the day. Now we are all, in Christ, are God's people. We are spiritual Jews, beloved. Under the law, you see, the Jews were God's people. And, 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 and if you were a, a Gentile and you wanted to uh, belong to God, uh, the Jews said that they had to do it the way they said they had to do it. Uh-uh. But Paul said, no, no, that is not the case anymore. There is a new covenant, and we are not under the law. He said, in Christ, uh, we are under grace, being clothed with the Spirit of God. We are all now Jews, spiritually. We all belong to God, just like the Jews belonged to God back in the day. We are all God's people. Beloved, in Christ, we are all the same. We are children of God by faith. Justified by faith, not the law. See, people going back there reading the Old Testament, nothing wrong with reading the Old Testament. You can even preach from the Old Testament, but you got to bring it up to the 21st century as much as you can because you can't bring all of it. There are only certain principles you can bring. See, because that was for the Jews. Oh, come on now. Uh, see, and so we are all today uh, children of the living God uh, being spiritual Jews. See, the law, the law could not save us, and the law cannot save us. We are children of God by faith, not by the law. See, there are people who are trying to keep the law now and, 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 and 
don't do this and, and, and don't do that and and, and, and you not oh you a woman uh, uh, why are you wearing your hair like that or uh, why are you cut your hair or uh, uh, men not supposed to have long hair or uh, why are you got one side purple and the other side red or uh, why are you doing it now, I know that's in the New Testament but it has to be in the correct context for us to understand it uh, there's a reason why they were saying that they're not talking about uh, just everyday life uh, cutting your hair if you're a woman uh that's not cutting off your glory uh, uh nothing wrong with wearing your hair one color on one side and another color on the other side nothing wrong with men having long hair and when and women having short hair uh-huh see the scriptures need to be interpreted correctly kept in their own context but you got preachers getting up there misleading people who don't study and don't know how to interpret scripture and beloved, I tell you, it's it, it, it's very dangerous. They will give an answer. As church leaders, they are going to give an answer. You mark my word, I'm telling you now. They will give an answer because they are being held to a higher accountability. Because they are leaders of God's people. They got to be careful how they handle God's word. But they get up there and say what they want to say and how they feel about it and give their opinion about it. You see, trying to hold on to the patriarchal uh, uh, system of the Old Testament where men had all the privileges. Oh, no, that ain't today. That ain't the, that ain't the word of God today. That's not. Don't be taken by that, beloved. Don't be fooled by that. That's not God's word today. Oh, no. That's some preacher that don't know uh, uh, what, what he's talking about. And some sometimes it's a sheep. Don't know what they're talking about. You see, beloved, I don't profess to know everything. But I do study. I study. You see. Uh -huh. I try to show myself approved. You see, I study. I study the word. I study. I don't just, just get up here and just say anything I think or anything I want. You see, well, let me get away from that. Let me go ahead on. Let me move on. See, so, so, beloved, the law could not and cannot save us because we can't keep it. We are not justified by keeping the law. Thank God. Do this. Do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. You can't do this. Uh-uh. We are not saved and delivered by keeping the law. Thank God. We are justified, saved, and delivered by our faith. Our faith in God. Our faith in Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah. So don't let anybody tell you. You are not justified. Don't let anybody tell you you are not worthy, that you are not valuable unto God. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't belong in the church. Don't let anybody tell you, beloved, that you are disqualified because of your background or because of where you're from or, or, or your gender expression or because of who you love or who you married. They are pointing fingers, yet they cannot keep the law themselves. Modern day Pharisees. Woo! Because that's what the Pharisees were doing, you see. They were pointing fingers at everybody else, trying to make everybody else keep the law, and they couldn't keep it themselves. Uh, beloved, those who are trying to keep the law today, you see, they, they keep the laws that they think they can and that they got under control. But there are laws that they don't keep, that they can't keep. And they sit up there and try to point fingers at other people. And they did wrong for it. They did wrong. They're not living under grace. They're not living in the spirit of God. They somehow have lost uh, uh, the realization uh, that we are justified by faith. And not by living by the law. See, we live in the spirit now. The 
the Spirit of God, and we have been clothed in the Spirit by Christ when we received him as our Lord and Savior. Whether you're black or white or Asian or Hispanic or Haitian, wherever your ethnic group, whatever your ethnicity, or whether you're straight or gay or Baptist or Catholic or Kojic or Pentecostal, Methodist, full gospel, whatever denomination, no matter our differences, beloved, we are all one. We are all one in Christ. I don't know how the Lord deals with those who are not in Christ. Beloved, I'm not going to sit here and judge. I don't know. I, I'm not going to say, you know, how, how God deals with those who have not received Jesus Christ. I don't know, beloved, but I do know that those of us who are in Christ, we are one. That song by Frank and Beverly, uh-huh, and Maze, you know, we are one. Woo, that's my theme song. Yeah, yeah. We are one. I don't know about people who don't receive Christ, but I do know that in Christ. See, I don't know. God has different ways of dealing with people. I don't know God's will, God's way uh, with people who are not in Christ. But I know that God sent Jesus for us and for all of our sins. I do know that. I do know that, but I'm not going to sit here and judge, but I do know that in Christ we are all one. And as I come to a close today, beloved, all of us, with all of our differences, and all of our uniquenesses, and all of our diversities, and all of our individual selves makes no difference in Christ. We are all human beings. We are all human. Created by God. No human is any better than another human. Because when you take off the skin, what's left is your heart and your spirit. Not the organ, the heart. I'm talking about your spiritual heart. Your spirit. Deep, deep in the innermost being of you. Your spirit. When you take off the skin, when you take off this body, Ain't nothing left but the Spirit. Everybody got to stand before Christ and give an answer. Everybody got to stand before God all by themselves without any flesh. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. You can't go up there in this body. There'll come a day when the Spirit will unite with the body, but it'll be a glorified body, a different kind of body. It's going to come up out the grave. You got loved ones that, 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 that left here and the body went to the grave. <laughs> the spirit went on up to be with the Lord. Absent from the body is present with the Lord, but there'll come a day when the spirit and the body, the, the grave going to burst open. They already burst open one time before when Christ died. On that day, they say the graves burst open and dead people walk the street. <laughs> Woo, your loved one's going to get up and we're going to put on these old bodies, but they're going to be glorified bodies, incorruptible bodies. No more pain and disease and sickness and death. No more sorrow and, and, and sadness and mental health problems and addiction and depression and anxiety. No more. Woo. Hallelujah. Glory to 
your name, Lord. Ooh, I thank God. We're all human. When we take off these bodies and, and all the money we got and, 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 and the skin colors and the privileges and the sex and the bodies and the whatever we are, male, female, and all that, that's why in Christ there is none of that. Because Jesus and, and God are not looking at the body, the outer appearance, what you're doing and what you're looking like. God looks at the heart. Woo, I praise your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, we're all human. Some people think they they something else, I guess. And, 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 and when, when God looks at them, that they see somebody special and better than everybody else. See, well, I don't know what God they serve. And I don't know what Bible they read. And it's no male nor female. No Jew, no Greek, no Gentiles. We're just all one. All human who need God. Through Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. We are one. Amen. Woo, God bless you, beloved. I tell you, that word blessed my heart myself. You hear me? And so I hope that this word has inspired you this morning, beloved. I hope that you know that God loves you. So to answer the question, have you ever wondered how God feels about you? Have you ever wondered how God sees you, beloved? You are all one. You belong with us all together, one family in God, through Christ. You don't have to wonder anymore whether you fit in God's family. You don't have to wonder anymore how God feels about you or how God sees you just because your skin is dark or brown or because where you're from or your background, whether you've been a penitentiary, whether you've been a, a, a locked up like a slave or free or whoever you are, because some inmates are free. <laughs> free in Christ. They're locked up behind bars, but they're free. Woo! Glory. Listen here. It don't matter. Whether you're in the LGBTQ plus community or not, who you love or who you marry does not matter to God. Amen. God loves you. God embraces you. And God wants you. Amen. And so, beloved, listen here before I close. I am going to extend to you the invitation to Christ. I don't want to close today without doing that. Because Jesus will make a difference in your life. I'm telling you, it'll be the best decision you've ever made. And so, beloved, let Jesus fix it for you. You might have a relationship with God. You might pray all the time. You might talk to God all the time. But you have yet to meet Jesus. I'm talking about the Jesus of, of, of equality. I'm talking about Jesus who loves and affirms and accepts the LGBTQ plus community. I'm talking about the Jesus who loves justice and mercy. I'm talking about the Jesus who died for us all. And if you come to him, beloved, no matter who you are, what your background is, who you love, there is no condemnation for you. People try to condemn you. But for those who are in Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation. Come to Jesus. And 
you'll change your life before your very eyes, I tell you. And so, beloved, pray and ask the Lord to come on and deliver you, save you from this crazy world, and give you eternal life with God. In the name of Jesus. You believe Jesus died for you? Tell God. And watch what happens. So beloved. <laughs> you want more. In your spiritual walk. You want more. In your relationship with God. Come on to Christ. Come on to Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, if you pray, or if you've already prayed and asked the Lord to come on in and deliver you and save you and to give you abundant life and eternal life, let us know. We want to be with you and support of you. Go any church you want to. That's your choice. We would love to have you at first meeting. We're going to open our doors again. We would love to have you. But we want to pray with you right now. We want to pray for you. Amen. So God bless you all. Thank you all for being here, joining us today. I can't see everybody who's on here. Uh, I don't want to mess your name up, Miss Nikki Bird. <laughs> I, I don't want to mess it up. looks like a beautiful name, and I just don't want to mess it up. Thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Listen, I can't see everybody because I have to look on my phone. Uh, Facebook did some other stuff, and now the, 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 the comments are on the other side, and, and I can't see. Uh, on the screen, so I have to look on my phone. It's a little bit difficult, but thank you all, and if I can't see you, God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, Facebook family, YouTube family, Instagram family, God bless your hearts. In Christ, we are one. We are one. Amen. God bless you, and God keep you, is my prayer. And I'll see you next time. Uh, Thursday, 7 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time for Real Talk Inspiration. And I hope to see you there. God bless you and God keep you, beloved, is my prayer. Let us have the benediction. May the grace of God and the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, beloved. You go in peace, and I'll see you.